All right, now this final piece. We went from equations of lines. Now we're going to introduce the concept, okay, of function. And simply a function is a rule or correspondence that assigns um, one element in, in what you call the domain, all right, to another element in, in what you call your range. All right, and it's a, what you call a one-to-one -one correspondence, meaning no x values repeat. Now, you've got a couple different ways you can do it. Um, you've got ordered pairs, you've got diagrams, you've got tables, you've got graphs, equations, or verbal description. All right, the first element or the inputs, typically for our purposes, we would say x values. All right, those are your independent variables or your domain values all right the range your y values and, and simply what that means is the now notice what it says dependent variable meaning that whatever the value is of x that's going to dictate what happens with respect to y all right now key concept is um notice no in the rule for functions so let's go back here. No x values can repeat. And what I mean by x values, no domain values, okay? So there's no repetition with respect to domain values. All right, so let's look at, uh, now we're going to take that concept and we're going to apply it to what we just did with linear equation all right so a function whose graph is a linear function whose graph is a line is a linear function notice that that function f of x okay that's not saying f times x that's f of x that's the notation it's exactly or it's similar to y equals m times x plus b all right the only thing that's different is that function notation simply allows us to put any value in that's in the domain into that function. All right, so m is and b are constants. All right, m is your slope. Okay, b is your y-intercept. So nothing's changed. The only thing that's changed is this notation. And simply what it's asking you with functions in real life is asking me, hey, what value do you want me to find? Okay, it's asking you. It's just a, it's another form of the linear form, but it can accept values that are within that domain. All right, so let's look at a quick application. All right, so notice here, an appliance repairman charges $60 for a, for a service call, plus $25 per hour for each hour spent on the repair. All right, we want to use a function. All right, so now, function notation. All right, so we use f of x. All right, now they're going to charge me $60 no matter what, just to come out. That didn't ask about time, just to come out, $60. All right, and remember, when they give you word problems, plus $25. And the thing we don't know is we don't know how many hours. So we've got to use a variable, which is x. Now, let's take this a step further. Let's say this repairman came out, and he was at the house for less than an hour. So, you know, real simple job. So, that's $60 plus $25 times zero. So, okay, that's about $60. Now, it was there five minutes. All right, now in most cases, he's going to round up, okay? Um, but for our, the way our function is defined, we're going to say that should be $60, okay? Now, if the repairman was there for three hours, so this is a, so let's call it a zero-hour job, and for a three-hour job, all right? Still $60 plus $25 times three hours. 
All right, that's $75. So this total is $135. Okay. So let's say that's $60 just to come out plus $75 with respect to time. It's $135. Okay. Let's say he was there 10 hours, right? So something was really broke. Um, and he had to do it over a couple of days. So F of 10. Okay, still $60 plus $25 for 10 hours worth of service. That's 60 plus 250. It's 310. So it's a 10 hour job. So that's all the function allows us to do. We can substitute, we can find, we've got an equation, but we can find uh, values for any value to, within that domain. And so that's how you take a linear or take linear equations, and now we just apply the definition of functions to end up with linear function models.